Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. It's been a little while since I put out a shop talk or, or shop update video, so I thought I'd get one out to you, let you know what's going on. Uh, and uh, just having made it through Christmas here, I thought I'd share my haul that uh, Santa Claus, or maybe my spare rib and my children got me. Uh, I thought I'd uh, share that with you too. So uh, it's a new year and, and hopefully uh, we got a lot of great things coming up and, and uh, uh, to do and, and to explore and learn and I'm looking forward to it and hopefully I can uh, continue to find time to do that stuff. So uh, let me bring the camera in and uh, I'll show you uh, my Christmas haul and then I'll show you a couple of other things. So um, I'll see you here in just a second. So this is my Christmas haul from um, uh, my spare rib and my kids. You know I've been uh, griping about scales right? But looky here. I've got a 6 inch uh, rigid and flexible scale got a 12 inch rigid and flexible scale. So uh, I got uh, got all the imperial scales. Um, uh, I was told that I uh, couldn't find any um, any uh, metric scales. So if somebody could tell me where to find uh, you know a six inch, well what would that be? A, a 150 millimeter and a 300 millimeter uh, metric scales. Uh, that, that would be awesome because I'd like to get some but boy I tell you what I am grateful to have these. Uh, also got some uh, uh, ball end um, uh, Allen wrenches that my sons uh, gave me and they, they got me some other tools too. They got me some pliers and some new wrenches and screwdrivers and magnetic bowls and uh, some, soft, uh, some soft pads for uh, C clamps and clamps uh, and probably some other stuff and I'm, I'm forgetting off the top of my head but I tell you what man, I've been wanting some of those so that's, that's awesome. Um, I got uh, a set of five 82 degree zero flute uh, chamfer bits uh, so I'm kind of looking forward to see how those are going to work. Everybody that I've seen them uh, uh, have them they look like they work really well so I'm, I'm looking forward to those so that's an awesome little addition right there. Um, also got uh, two micrometers uh, now these are Chinese mics but I got a zero uh, to 25 millimeter and I got a 25 to 50 millimeter because I, you know, like I said, I had uh, zero uh, metric tooling, so I'm, you know, I needed needed a little bit and, and want to get some because uh, I think it'd be easier to, um, uh, to to just turn to the metric size than me, you know, um, converting to imperial and then, uh, you know, just it's got to be easier that way, even with an imperial lead uh, lead screw. And I tell you why because. Uh, you know, one millimeter is about forty thousandths, okay, and uh, that that ratio is good all over the place. So if I need a, a tenth of a millimeter, I know that it's it's about four thousandths, right? And if I need a hundredth of a millimeter, I know it's about four tenths. Now, granted, I can't dial in four tenths on my on my lathe or whatever, but I mean, at least I got some sort of ratio to follow by, and then I can always re uh, measure and then readjust without constantly converting stuff from uh, metric to imperial. <coughs> um, also got a set of V-blocks uh, with clamps, so it's a match pair uh, ground. So I'm pretty excited about that. You know, I didn't have any. Uh, I think uh, I'm slowly getting there, so when I have my, uh, when I get my mill up and running and things like that, then um, yeah, I'm ready to go. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about having some V-blocks with the clamps. Um, so I'm telling you, uh, Santa Claus was good to me this year, guys. So I'm, I'm not complaining at all. I'll have to uh, do a better job of that here in a minute. And, uh, and I'm sure I've told you guys a uh, hundred times over that uh, I just absolutely love to read. And um, so let me uh, start with this little group right here. You know, in one of my um, YouTube shop student uh, videos, I talked about the workshop practice series, right? And uh, there are several in that series that I've won, and I bought a bunch of them, and then I thought, you know what, these are good enough. I think I just want the whole series uh, to put on the bookshelf and read and as I need that information. So uh, my wife, uh, by the way, there's 49 of these books in the series to date. Um, and my wife, and I've got probably a little over half, uh, but my wife bought a few more. She bought number 11, which is electroplating. It took her a couple years to find that one. I don't know why she had such a hard time, but I got that one. Got number 22, uh, Workshop Electrics. And 
23 work, workshop construction. Now, I don't know how useful that is to me since I have a, a workshop, but it, at least it makes the series complete. Um, number 24, electric motors in the home shop. They've got a few different ones. Uh, this one covers uh, single phase and three phase motors and, and different ways to wire them. And then uh, number 26, workshop hints and tips. Now this has uh, got a series of articles from different magazines going from the you know probably late teens to the early 40s early 50s somewhere in there little tips and tricks and things that you can do so that's a that's a pretty cool cool addition so in addition to the, those I got uh, this one here I got uh, introducing model tractor engine construction and I'm about halfway done reading it um, I tell you what you know, building the stationary engine um, you know that uh, Emma built and then kind of following along with her videos and build one myself this whole model engine thing is it's it's interesting and I tell you what I think when I'm done with the stationary engine build I got a couple other projects that I need to get done but as far as engine builds I think I'm gonna do the Kenneth Wells tractor engine or traction engine uh, next so uh, Emma if you're watching this uh, remember I'm gonna need some castings so anyway this is uh, talks about different aspects a little history about traction engines and uh, different aspects of uh, the boiler construction, um, uh, the side plates, firebox, uh, the gearing, the whole ball of wax. So it's it's pretty neat, pretty neat book. Good introductory course. Now this book here was not the book that I wanted, although on my list I had ornamental turning, but it was one from uh, from SI Models. So, but now my wife, I, you know, I didn't put an author. She just looked up ornamental turning and found this one. So it's a, it's a book by the same title and same topic. So actually, it was a wonderful screw up because I didn't know this um, book existed. But this uh, talks about different tools and settings to do ornamental turning on a metal lathe, uh, different setups and stuff like that. I'm looking forward to reading that one. This one here is coming next after this one. So that's that. And then finally, uh, you know, you guys know that I do the CNC. Um, tutorials uh, for for the new folks and uh, you know I'm, I'm a little behind I, I got more that I want to do just haven't had time but now this book here CNC programming handbook by Peter Smith is if you're interested in learning g-code uh, this is based on FANUC controllers right which I think Haas uses FANUC and there's other ones out there who uses the FANUC controller this is the g-code that runs on those and uh, He's very, very concise and clear um, on, on how to program. It's, it's an uh, excellent book, and I've been wanting the book for a while. I had a PDF of it, and I have no idea where I got it. Somebody might have given it to me. I don't know, but I wanted the book, right, because I like holding the paper. So I'm, I'm really excited uh, to read, hold this one in my hands and read it again, even though I've read the PDF probably four or five times. So, But anyway, so that's the book collection I got uh, to add to my library, so I'm really excited about that. So now, as far as other things in the uh, shop, let's uh, let's move the camera around and uh, show you what's going on. So as I was building the Kenneth Wells stationary engine, you know, I had to bend some parts, I had to file some parts, and I had my vise move back on the table. You can maybe you can see the old outline from it. Problem was, you know, I could only put something in the vise and it wouldn't clear the table. And and Peter from PGS says, uh, "Hey man, you need to move your vise forward so that you can put some." Uh, uh, you know, so, so you can put something past the top of the bench. So I've done just that. You know, I've got, uh, I've got now where I can work on stuff that's long, hangs down below the bench. It's about as far out as I care to bring it based on uh, my top and how much meat I got there. But anyway, I did move the bench and uh, so that's going to that's gonna be prove, uh, that's going to prove to be pretty helpful. So hey Peter, thanks for the suggestion. Man, I just want to let you know that I followed up. Okay, well, you guys remember the saga about the free bandsaw. A subscriber said, hey, uh, you pay to ship it, it's yours, it just needs a motor. And when it came, remember the gearbox was broke, we talked about that. Well, the long and the short of the story is, <clears throat> UPS uh, said, you know, they told uh, the shipper, the guy who donates, says, we're not going to cover it. And it really boils down to because I didn't have pictures of and I didn't save the packaging. So, you know the old expression, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So from here on out, I'll uh, I'll make sure that um, I uh, 
you know, I'll, I'll take either video or take pictures of the packaging, anything that looks kind of suspect to me. So it's all back together, except for just a couple pieces. In my hands, this is a cover. It goes actually, I think it goes on the back side of the switch. I just haven't got it on yet. And I need a set screw for the, for the uh, stock stop. So other than that, it's, it's back together. <clears throat> Cuts reasonably okay. Um, this is the older style of saw. So, you know, instead of having the uh, cam pens on both sides where you can adjust the blade, left to right uh, and adjust the ba the backstop up and down. I can only adjust one to tighten against the thing. And then, you know, normally on the newer ones, there's a, a bolt here where you can actually adjust the vertical plumbness of the, of the blade. So I really don't have those adjustments. But, I mean, I'm uh, just going to use it for, uh, as my new parting tool, you know how the, old, la the last parting tool went. Uh, finally, um, I had a third horse motor. Uh, laying around and you'll see that I put a plug on the motor and a plug and that's just something that I picked up from Mr. Pete. Uh, it's just really handy and um, so uh, I tell you what, let's let's make a cut with it and uh, we'll get the saw in position where or the camera in position where you can see it and uh, we'll take a closer look. Okay, so I have some, uh, I think this is half inch uh, black gas pipe. So let's, uh, let's just let's see what we got here. And I guess maybe I'll let this uh, go real time, we'll see. I can't beat that, right? Let's, uh, let's take a look at the cut in here. and I'll wipe this off just a little bit. <clears throat> so, the square, I mean, the uh, I don't think the saw cuts very square. I mean, there might be some adjustments that I can do to fix that, but, you know, look, at this point, I'm just, I'm just glad to have, let's see, Let me pull it back. There we go. Okay, so it's uh, when I look at it over that uh, you know five eighths of a length. There's about a sixteenth of an inch gap there, or so. So it is cutting a little off, and like I said, I, I may be able to adjust a little bit out of it. But hey, look, it sure in the heck beats the uh, beats the hacksaw. So let me uh, let me get the uh, camera back here in position and got a couple things I want to say on closing and and then we'll finish this video up. All right, so not a whole lot going around in the shop, but you know uh, making progress. For those of you guys following along on my engine build, um, I've got the piece of 20 gauge uh, metal marked out. Almost looks like layout die, doesn't it? I done a good job with a sharpie, right? <laughs> I think really. Uh, I might get some layout die because, you know, painting a whole sheet with a Sharpie kind of sucks. Um, maybe I don't have to do it, but I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, so uh, I'm uh, waiting on uh, uh, something to come in before I <clears throat> finish that. Uh, yeah, most of you guys probably got your 25% off Harbor Freight coupon, and uh, I'm no different. So I got uh, the small, you know, 30-inch uh, bench mount brake. I thought I would... Uh, with the 25% uh, off coupon and come in uh, under 50 bucks. So I thought, you know, why not? I'll try it. Um, have been working on the gas tank. You can see here that uh, I went with yellow. So that's uh, what I'm doing now. I'm waiting for that to cure so they can go in the oven and be baked off. And then uh, I'll finish off the, uh, uh, the uh, brass parts of it. And if we, I don't know about you, but I think... Uh, I think that black and yellow looks pretty good, so that's what the author actually has on the book, and I think it looks pretty sharp, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. So look, that's uh, 
probably enough blathering for me here for one shop update. Uh, just want to wish you guys a happy new year and thanks for uh, all the, uh, the, the emails and I appreciate the comments and the questions and, and most definitely appreciate all the help. And again, I want to thank Emma uh, uh, Ritson, or Rit Ritson? Well, anyway, Emma Spare Room Machine Shop for sending me the stickers and sending me the casting. I've got the casting fettled and uh, almost uh, done with that there so uh, it'll be ready for when I start, uh, start that part of the engine build. I want to thank uh, Art Eckstein and Chirpy for uh, all the help and endless suggestions. <clears throat> and uh, last but not least, I want to thank uh, Richard uh, for making something for nothing. He's, uh, he's uh, definitely been an asset to me. Thank you, Rich. Uh, so other than that, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and uh, if, if these videos are helpful or they entertain you or, or whatever, share them, like them with your friends if you want. And other than that, have a blessed day.